This video is about plotting in SimSmith. Much of the power in SimSmith comes from the ability to plot in a very flexible manner that suits the problem you're, you're working on at the moment. And for example of that, let me, um, let me just do a simple circuit here. Let's build a, just a single um, series LC circuit where the inductor has a pretty crummy Q, save 20. I'm going to sweep it from 1 to 100 megahertz. I'm going to look at it nominally at 10 megahertz. The reactance of both these components is 50, 50 ohms. And this is a plot right here. This plot is a path plot starting at 50 plus J0. The pink trace is due to the capacitor. The green trace is due to the inductor. The inductor does not follow the, the capacitor's path back due to the low Q. And we end up approximately with a um, impedance of 52.5 plus J35.7 micro, basically 52.5 plus J0. The extra 2.5 ohms here comes from the Q of 20. We can also look at a sweep. A sweep basically says whatever parameter is chosen to be swept, we look at the resultant uh, of, this, of the network over, the, over, that, over those parameters. In this case, it's from 1 to 100 megahertz. 1 megahertz is down here at the little dot. 100 megahertz is up here at the X. And the big circle is the, the frequency is shown uh, in the generator box. We can also combine the two plots to show the path that exists uh, at any frequency along the way here. However, all these plots are aimed at impedances. Often we want to know other things about a circuit. We want to know the power into the load. We may want to know voltage or currents um, in, com in components. So to do that, there's another plot type sh available. This plot type is called the square chart. The square chart comes with a couple of predefined uh, calculation types. One is a power window and one is an SWR window. And the power window can ha look at power along the way uh, throughout the circuit. Typically, you look at the power at the load. And the SWR can basically look at the SWR at any place in the circuit, too. Generally, you look at the SWR all the way back at the generator. However, these two um, are really inadequate for, for, some, for some cases. You might want to know the voltage across across the inductor here at a certain frequency. You might want to know um, the power in the inductor. Well, SimSmith gives you the ability to write your own um, equation for plotting. It's not quite as convenient as doing it in LT Spice where you just click on the part or you hold the Alt key down and click on it to get the power in the part, but it also runs in real time too. So there's a real, there's a real convenience to using it within SimSmith if you're already doing, doing the analysis the analysis in Sam Smith. So, all the all the work occurs in this little box right here. Plots. There's nothing normally in the plot window. If you do file new, you basically um, have whatever's in here um, erased. Now, the details of what you can put in here to plot is pretty co complicated in some cases. However, we have the ability. Let me just drag a file over. This is a file. It's just a, it's just a text file. You can put several um, sets of um, equations in a file and just copy them. I can copy this right here. I just do Control C. Go to go to here. Control V. Now, a couple of interesting things. Let me get rid of this now because I don't need it. Um, this just shows a more complicated one, and I could keep on going and keep on going. I could have, I could have a whole list of these things you saved around. SimSmith does not save these plots, uh, the formulas in the plots, other than in a .ss file. So you can't save them separately to bring them back again. You can bring the file back that has them, that has them contained it within, but you can't, do it, you can't save them um, by themselves. It turns out that when I click Done here, this line gets very small. What, what this line is is nothing more than the first, the first line here. It doesn't matter whether it's a comment or not. That's what shows. 
and initially it just says it says it says just says plots when it first comes up. If you wanted something else to appear there, you could say my plot, and when I when I close this window off, it would say my plot. Plotting commands can have comments within them, which are really nice in order for you to um, describe what you've done. This line here, with starting with two slashes, does absolutely nothing. You can put anything you want into it. Any, any line that does work, such as this line, the, the comment can be at the end of the line, if you wish. Um, a comment, basically, when, once you run into a comment for the rest of the line, nothing counts. So fundamentally, this, this plot command here does two plots. The first plot is we're going to plot the voltage across the capacitor, C1. And we're going to plot the voltage across the inductor, L1. There are some interesting things here. We have two plots already shown. We have a wattage plot. We had an SWR plot. We've created a new plot. There's two more plot plotting vertical scales available, Y1 and Y2. We've labeled this Y1, which is on the left side. Y2 would appear over here on the right side. We've labeled Y1 to be V. Now, notice it's, a, it's, it's kind of a... I put a space between the between the V here and here, and let me do let me get rid of that for a moment. And notice this gets really wide and kind of ugly looking. Um, and this is log V or, or V. But um, if I want this V to look a little bit more like text, uh, I can put it in some in, with a space around it or two spaces or something, and it shows up looking more like a normal size font. So let's go back again to the to the plot window. I'm going to plot this first thing in parentheses here. There's actually this, pl the plot command has five parameters associated with it. There's a, there's a command, a parameter that's not shown here, which is that how I'm going to plot it, whether it's dots or dashes or lines or grid or whatever. Then there's this field. This field is what shows up down here. This is the actual work that's being done. This is the name of the axis, if I'm going to plot it on an axis. If I leave this off, I don't need to include this by, at all. If I do that and leave it off, it shows Y1. But I don't know what Y1 is. Is Y1 watts, milliwatts, volts? Is it uh, nanofarads? Whatever, I don't know. So for convenience, we have the ability to name it. So we name it V for volts. Now, any other command that uses Y1 can either name it volts also or it can be unnamed. If I was to put something down here like um, type volt here, I would get an error. And the reason I'll get an error is because I've tried to define the I've tried to define the axis with two labels. So it's just easier just not to put anything down here for, for the subsequent ones. So we're going to plot C and V. Um, if we, leave the, if we leave this label off here, SimSmith uses this as a label. It makes the field wider. It shows both of them right now until I hit done, and then one will go away, of course. Um, it's a wider field. It lets me have less room here for uh, things to plot before they get uh, too small. So generally, you want to name it as something. So I named it L.V. And it's just like everything else in SimSmith. I can turn this off or on if I want. So what do I got here? And before we go too far, too far along, let's discuss how we use these, these axes. These axes are kind of interesting. They kind of work on the oscilloscope uh, metaphor in that uh, we have a, a particular item on this. It's a 10-grid ten, ten axis. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 uh, divisions. We have one division, which is the, which is what we'll call it the pivot division, and, it, and then we have a scale factor from the pivot. So if we take the pivot division and we have our mouse on it and we roll, roll our, our mouse wheel or anywhere else up here, notice what happens. We have 0 0.2, 0 0.2 units per division. If I roll the mouse wheel, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 
0.02. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel the other way. 0.05, 0.1, 0.2, 0.5, 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100. It uses the same um, scheme as an oscilloscope, it uses the 1, 2, 5 multiplication factor. Now, notice the zero stayed, stayed put. If I move the zero up to here and I do it again, it's still, the zero still doesn't change. This is the pivot, pivot point. If I want something else to be the pivot point, like one, I go up here and I left click on it, one's the new pivot point. I can take one, I can move it up and down, and then I can move around one volt. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, and if you get this all wacko, I'm mean, going to try to get it screwy here. So now, let's suppose I wanted to get back to zero. Um, and I don't want to go just continue much working my way down here to get to zero, which I can do. I can just spin the mouse wheel one way until I run to the limit. And then zero will appear somewhere along the way. And I can just drag it down to where I want again. And then I can basically... Oops, I didn't drag it down properly, did I? Drag it down here and leave it there. Now let's, now let's move the, um, the scale back. I'm moving the scale by rolling the mouse wheel. And I'm not, um, I'm not changing this at all. So it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, and it seems a little weird to begin with. But after you get used to it, it's really pretty, it's really pretty convenient. And I, initially, I kind of didn't like it, and I've kind of grown to, it's grown on me, and I like it a lot now. So, anyways, this is that. This works that way. This axis works the same way. So does SWR axis. So let's look at this voltage axis. It's going zero, 500 volts, thousand volts. Well, that's way too much voltage for a measly one watt source here. So we need to shrink this down a little bit. So let's work our way down here. Zero to 14 volts. Does 14 volts make sense? Well, it is a one watt source. A one watt source into 50 ohms gives me seven volts uh, RMS. These voltages are RMS voltages. They're not peak voltages. The currents are RMS. The voltages are RMS um, and not peaks, which is different than LT spice. Uh, 14 volts is the right number. At the low frequencies, all the voltage in this circuit will be basically across the capacitor. The inductance, the reactance is very low. The 50 ohms doesn't contribute much to the capacitor. So we see 14 volts there. If we look at the, um, let's see, why isn't the, uh, why isn't the other plot plotting? Well, it should. Let's, let, me, let me get the label back on here anyway, so. Um, There it is. I don't know why it wasn't plotting a minute ago. Um, here's the voltage on the inductor. Here's the voltage on the capacitor. In this circuit, at resonance, the two voltages are equal. So this has a voltage across it of basically seven point, uh, so it's, it's seven, it's se basically seven volts. And they both are seven volts, yet the, the um, resistor sees um, seven volts also. So they all have seven volts across them, with the net effect being that these two are out of phase completely, so the, the, uh, the resistor sees the full voltage. We could also look at the voltage across these t the two of these components if we wished. We could do that with, with a construct something like this. We could plot, and let's call it, um, just say total, to total, total V. And it could be the magnitude of now L L, excuse me, L dot V, capital V, is the voltage going into this component. So that's the voltage from here to here, and it's a complex number. If we subtract from that the voltage right here, and as a complex number, we will get the voltage across the two of these. So L dot V minus L1 dot V. And again, they're capital V's because Capital V's are the voltage going into the node. And let's put we'll put that again on Y1 also. Whoops. And we're done. If we plot the total voltage here, which we're doing, we see that the total, we get rid of these other voltages, let's get rid of everything else. The total voltage, we see at resonance here, which is 10 megahertz, the total voltage goes almost to zero. And this voltage would have gone a lot lower if this Q, Q 
Q had been a little bit higher. So let's raise the Q and watch what happens. If we raise the Q up here to a couple hundred, we see the voltage going almost straight to zero. That's why I used the low Q to begin with to show that show the effect of this. But we can still see that the voltage the voltage is a minimum here at resonance. And you know, these things may or may not be interesting to you for this particular case, but they're very interesting a lot of times if you're building a circuit and you have to size components. And you can size components over frequency and you can look at the maximum current that would flow into the, in the component. You could look at the maximum voltage across the component and that would determine how big the component needed to be. So these are incredibly powerful features within SimSmith that are uh, things you don't necessarily use on a day-to-day -day basis but they're, they're there and they're available to be used and they work uh, extremely well. So um, I would encourage people to do something like what I've done here. Now I have a different, I have a different file that's got about 20 of these in it, but it's representative of things that were, took me a little while to, to get to work. This is a, this, the very first video I did was a, a plot of efficiency on the Smith chart for a T network and the efficiency was we're changing the colors of what matching ranges um, would match on would match so if you match something that was green it was less than it was a five percent or less loss in the tuner yellow was at five to ten percent loss etc etc and then i could then these two commands are, are commented out but they changed the smith chart to be um, if the voltage is greater than a certain amount gb is the vo breakdown voltage of capacitors then I know then I either don't print anything in the Smith chart and say it doesn't match, or I print it as a different color and say that it matches, but it's but it's out of bounds. So these, there's a lot of work to be done in, in these kinds of um, formulas. But once you get it right, you can save them and you can use them then later on without much effort. And that's why it's probably a good idea to um, to keep them around. Anyways, over time I've I've got, a, got I've gotten quite a few of these. And there's a and there's a lot of power in these in these kind of a circuits. Hopefully, um, this is a good representation of, you know, of, of the kind of things you can do. Uh, you can do a lot more than just voltage and current. Uh, you can pl you can plot anything you wish to. There's uh, let me see. Let me bring this up real fast here in the um, F block syntax here. You've got a very large repertoire of calculations that you can calculate and, and, and things you can do. You got square root, sine, cosine, tangent, log, um, real imaginary magnitude, angle. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff you can do here. So it's pretty much the case of if you think it can be done, it can probably be done. And at, you know, just ask somebody on a reflector or some or something for some help because uh, in general, there are there are there's a few people out here using SimSmith to a pretty high level that understand this stuff well, and it's a pretty easy uh, it's pretty it's pretty easy to pretty easy to write these formulas. It takes a little while getting used to them. Um, there are a couple little oddities that go along as you write the formula. A lot of times, you will get a pop up window that says something's wrong with the formula. Let me see if I can make something be wrong here at the moment. Um, formula turned red, and then I got this error, um, and it's it's not because there's an error necessarily. It's just I haven't I haven't finished what I'm doing, and sometimes the error does not go away quickly, and you make it go away, and if it doesn't come back, then it's gone again. Of course, let's see if it'll go away right away here. It went away this time right away. There's some cases it doesn't go away. It loses track of where um, uh, you know where you are and stuff. Uh, the errors are fairly aggressive. Uh, and consequently, they, uh, they're a little bit annoying, but they're, it's really nice to know when there's no error, you're in good shape, which is, which is nice. So um, I hope, uh, hope this is a, you know, it's suitable for, the ba for a basic uh, video, but on the other hand, um, the topics we've talked about so far in SimSmith have pretty much run the gamut of all the basic things and everything from now on uh, needs to be pushing the envelope a little bit more to more complex things. Anyways, hope everyone's enjoyed this and thank you very much and uh, there'll be more videos. The next video will be probably the biggest video I've done and it'll be about how to, how to make and do accurate measurements within SimSmith and how to use, uh, if you have a network analyzer or some kind of impedance meter, how to make accurate measurements in that. And that will be probably the longest video I'm going to do 
And after that, I think most of the videos I'm going to do for the basic series are going to be some examples of particular problems and how to solve them.